This is a production of Cornell University. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Paula Ilagawa and I'm happy to share with you my research on cassava trait preferences of smaller farmers in Uganda. Uh, in this picture, the farmer was telling me that he was uh, impressed by the yield of this cassava plant. Uh, cassava is an important um, source of food and it is estimated that over 500 million people eat cassava on a daily basis. And in Uganda, where I come from, cassava is our second most important staple food crop. Um, all the parts of the cassava plant are used in one way or another, but um, for food we normally use the cassava roots. Uh, over the recent past, um, a lot of effort has been focused on improving cassava for agronomic traits. Um, however, there has been less emphasis put on uh, researching on improving quality preferences, uh, most especially those of uh, women who do a lot of work regarding cassava production and processing. Um, and hence, this consequently uh, limits the adoption and usage of improved cassava varieties. Hence, there is need to link farmers' knowledge to that of the breeders. And my work will be trying to address, to contribute towards the narrowing the knowledge gap in three different ways. Uh, the first one will be to identify the trade preferences of smaller farmers. Uh, then second uh, will be to optimize the phenotype, uh, phenotyping protocols for the identified traits and do studies to understand the genetic basis of the preferred traits. Our first study was aimed at identification at, of cassava trait preferences of smaller farmers. We conducted this study in four districts in Uganda, and we had a number of factors that we considered to select the four districts, uh, which included, we are interested in areas with high cassava production, high diversity of land races, and low disease pressure. So within each district, um, we randomly selected 128 farmers uh, stratified by age and sex to participate in the study. And we collected the data by holding focus group discussions with small groups of farmers and administering some structured interviews to individual farmers. In total, we, had, um, we held 32 focus group discussions and administered 192 interviews. Um, we also collected cassava leaf samples from all the farmers' uh, fields uh, in their cassava, with on the, all the farmers' fields um, in relation to the cassava varieties that they were growing, and this will help us to understand the genetic diversity of the farmers' cultivars. Um, during the data correction, um, the farmers' responses were handwritten, and, but as a measure for quality control, we also did audio recordings. Uh, so one, the first step we did in processing the data was to convert the handwritten notes to the digital format and uh, do the transcription of the audio recordings to Word documents and later translate um, the Word documents from the three local languages to English. Then we did the data analysis using SPSS, which is the software that is commonly used for analyzing social science data. Um, one of the questions we asked the farmers was to tell us um, the different uh, likes the, uh, about the cassava varieties that they were growing. And in this graph, I'm um, showing the top, the top nine traits that, um, that they mentioned. On x-axis, the traits with the stars are what farmers mentioned, but they are currently not being addressed in the breeding program. So much as the farmers were interested in high-yielding um, cultivars that are early maturing, 
they also mentioned that they wanted cassava roots that uh, cassava varieties that whose roots get soft on boiling and whose roots can store longer in ground. Uh, we also asked the farmers to tell us the different ways in which they eat uh, cassava. And in, in here, the boiled form um, had the highest proportion followed by the fra and um, the leaves were had the smallest proportion. So the other question we asked was to tell us about the different uh, attributes of cassava that were desirable for, for it to be eaten in each of these forms. And in this graph, I'm showing the top seven traits that they mentioned that were uh, priority for the cassava to be eaten in the boiled form. Uh, as in the previous bar graph, uh, the traits with the stars are what the farmers mentioned, but are currently not being addressed in the breeding program. And for my next two, my next two studies, I've uh, decided to focus on softness of the cassava roots because um, currently it was mentioned as the number one trait for cassava to be eaten in the boiled form, but it, uh, currently it's not being addressed in the breeding program. So um, the next study will be aimed at um, optimizing the protocols we can use to measure softness. Um, we established the trial to use for this study in 2015 at two sites in Uganda using augmented block design. And the genotypes that we used were uh, 210 accessions that we collected from the farmers who participated in the surveys, along with 70 lines that we got from the breeding program in Uganda. Then we harvested um, this trial last year in October and at harvest we collected the cassava root samples uh, which are being analyzed for biochemical properties that might relate to softness. So um, when we got to the laboratory, we boiled the equal sections of the cassava root at a constant temperature and we measured softness uh, using the penetrometer. And this is the uh, picture for the penetrometer for those who are not familiar. Uh, we've, we are also analyzing um, the samples for different biochemical properties that may, uh, that may correlate to the quality preferences. And this could be, the reason we are doing this because um, if they are more highly heritable and highly correlated to the quality preferences that we identified, uh, the breeders could do indirect breeding for those traits. Um, in this plot, in this plot um, I'm showing the phenotypic variation for the results um, we got for softness using the combined data set from the two sites. And on the y-axis, this is the force, um, this, on the y-axis is the force that was used to penetrate through the roots after we boiled them. And on the x-axis are the different time intervals at which we measured the softness. And one thing to say, um, as you increase the time of boiling, the you the force you use to penetrate through the roots uh, goes on decreasing, and this is because um, as you boil the roots, they get softer. We also computed the broad sense heritability using um, Jim Rowland's method, and one observed is the heritability estimate increases as you increase the time of boiling. Um, but as you move from 45 minutes to 60 minutes, the heritability estimate becomes low, and this is because as at 60 minutes, most of the root samples have uh, overcooked and it becomes hard to precisely measure softness. So um, 
the analysis is still an, um, ongoing, and once we complete that, we will um, find the correlations between the bio biochemical properties and the quality preferences. And for the biochemical properties that are highly correlated to softness, we will establish the scoring scales that can be used for their measurement. Our last study is looking at marker trait associations for softness. Um, we established the trial to use um, last year in October at two sites in Uganda using augmented block design. And we used a diverse panel of 430 accessions. Uh, in this picture, um, this is the field trial at one of the sites. And we will be harvesting the trial in October this year. And we will phenotype um, the root samples uh, for softness using the protocol which we are going to develop in study two. And after that, we will perform a genome-wide association study to identify markers across the genome that are associated with genetic variation for softness. Um, earlier on, I said that we also collected the cassava leaf samples from the farmers' fields uh, during the surveys. Um, we have genotyped these ones and using uh, GBS. And here I'm showing the, the PC plot for the, for the genotype data. And the different colors uh, represent the four districts where we collected the samples. And one thing to note is um, much as there are some related genotypes uh, grown across all the across all the districts, uh, there are some uh, genotypes that are only grown in some locations, and um, this could explain some of the differences that we observed across the that some of the differences in quality preferences across the districts, and. The, the genetic diversity of the farmers' uh, materials could also be exploited by the breeders to improve cassava for the quality preferences of smaller farmers. So in summary, we have been able to identify the trait preferences um, that are important to smallholder farmers and we are currently optimizing protocols that we can use to measure some of the identified traits. And um, we'll be doing the genetic studies to help us um, understand the genetic architecture for the identified traits. And all this information will be useful to the breeders in designing appropriate breeding strategies for the preferred traits. Uh, with that, I would like to acknowledge support from my advisors, uh, the GoLab members, um, the team at National Crop Resources Research Institute in Uganda, where my field trials are located, uh, the Next Gen Cassava team, and funding from IITA and Gates Foundation. Thank you. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.